our most effective response to terror and to hatred is love. It's compassion. You know, the idea that compassion and love will defeat radical Islamic terrorists that are sliding, uh, slicing people's throats and terrorizing all of us and bombing and killing innocent men, women, and children and going into nightclubs and shooting them up, you know, is beyond anything I have ever heard in terms of its ignorance. And I said this yesterday, just, just imagine Winston Church of blood, toil, sweat, and tears. We'll beat them here, we'll beat them in the hills, we'll beat them in the land, on sea, and on the air. He was a hero. Or FDR's response to the Japanese Pearl Harbor. You know, I just cannot believe the mindset, the same mindset that redacted this guy saying Allah, and they put in the word God as the interpretation, which is a lie, or the same mindset, I, I am a committed soldier of ISIS, and they redact ISIS because they don't want to offend, uh, quote, the Muslim community. It's not the Muslim. We're talking about radical Islamists that want to kill us. Now, the tape you heard before that was an eyewitness. And there is a case where a five-year-old girl was literally raped by migrant boys, apparently Muslim, in America, and the media's response, their first instinct is to dismiss the story and label local residents, racist and bigots and Islamophobes. You know, it's sort of like the, the don't ask, don't tell doctrine on the refugee file is becoming just a little too routine. Five-year-old girl sexually assaulted in a laundry room by two refugee boys as a third boy looks on and film the attack. His 89-year-old neighbor saw suspicious activity, approached the area, and was the one eyewitness that described what actually happened there. And that's what you just heard. You know, you can add to this the stupidity of the the comments of John Kerry just the other day. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that there is a threat. Zero evidence refugees making it through the U.S. screening process pose a greater risk than other groups. Well, that's not what the CIA director said, the FBI director said, the assistant FBI director, former special envoy to defeat ISIS said, the House Homeland Security a committee chair said, or anybody else. There is a great threat. We saw it in Belgium. We saw it in Brussels. We saw it in Paris. So what's it going to take? Unbelievable. Joining us now, Rich Higgins, Vice President, Intelligence, National Security Programs, former manager with the Department of Defense, combating terrorism, technical support, office and irregular warfare support program, and Pam Geller, is the president of the American Freedom Defense Initiative and editor and publisher of Atlas Shrugs. And uh, welcome both of you back to the program. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you, Sean. You know, there's one other thing that I didn't mention here. Apparently, some of the recovered phones from the nightclub in Orlando Pulse have recordings of the jihadi uh, talking to a co-conspirator regarding tactics. We do know during the attack that he stopped to see if he was trending on social media. We do know during the attack that he contacted his wife, who we don't know where she is right now. Um, is there a co-conspirator here? I saw this on your website, Pam. Well, I mean, this is the latest bombshell coming out of the Orlando Jihad attack. And it's consistent with the obfuscation, the scrubbing, and the whitewashing of this worst terrorist attack since 9-11. Uh, you know, and it's coming from the victims. You know, they said they recorded it on their phones. So you have a massive intel failure. You have, as you know, I think it was a relative of yours, a gun shop owner who had called the FBI uh, when he had tried to purchase weapons at his shop. They never even came down to the store. You have Disney. You have Disney who called the FBI saying that he and his wife had been casing Disney. He'd been cheering 9-11 uh, in school. He has a history, not one but two FBI investigations, one that was quashed when he said that the co-workers that he had threatened and said he was a member of an Islamic Jihad group, uh, he said they were, quote, Islamophobic, and they killed that investigation. This is a massive intel fa failure. I don't know why the Obama administration wants Americans to die. There were more red flags here than a China National Day parade. Well, I keep saying this whole thing. Now, uh, I, Rich, I had you on with Phil Hain, and both, both of you are, are whistleblowers. Now, yours was a little bit different. He was part of the 
Department of Homeland Security formation. And when Obama became president, both of you talked about a scrubbing of the names that you had acquired over a long period of time of Muslims associated with radicalism. And those names were then scrubbed. But when you worked in irregular warfare support programs, aren't we really talking about special ops? Aren't we talking yeah. about covert operations, plausible deniability? Exactly, Sean. And I think what, you know, what we saw in there was you know, not just Phil's scrubbing of names, but the systematic removal of anything pertaining to Islam at the, at the strategic intelligence, at the policy levels, where we couldn't even say Islam. We couldn't talk about Muslim. We couldn't say... Wait, wait, hang on a sec. Wait, wait. You could not say radical Islam at the state, at the Department of Defense? At, at level in the Pentagon where the, the where the political sphere meets the operational sphere, anywhere that touched off limits. So what you'll see is national military strategies, national security strategies that use this obfuscating term, violent extremism, which if you really ask what that is, it collapses into nothing. And I think I would probably as a former soldier be defined as a violent extremist. I, I, and you, meanwhile, we had the names of terrorists or known terrorists, known uh, people known sympathizers of terrorism in your database, and you were told and forced to erase their names. That, that was Phil's specific story, and, and it, it's, it, it's... Well, tell us your specific Tell us your specific story. I don't want to put words in your mouth. My, my specific story is, as someone who wanted to work on this issue, you know, charged with developing capabilities for combating terrorism, we wanted to build a robust understanding of how Islam at the doctrinal level functions understanding that jihad is part of Islam. And the solutions to stopping the jihad are also inside Islam, but we were prohibited from even looking in there. Anyone who did the diligence to understand this at, at, a, at, a, you know, at, a, at a level that you could actually interpret the deliberate decision-making process of our enemy was quashed by the system, hunted down and pushed out of the system actively. So while we play lip service to understanding the threat doctrine, we don't actually understand it. Our generals are saying we don't have a strategy. We're wasting trillions of dollars. And, and you know, my, my comment is to Attorney General Lynch, how about some compassion for your fellow Americans? You know, how about putting Americans first? You know, this is where, where Donald Trump is right. Well, now, American people are sick of this. So you're, you're describing a Department of Defense that is so politically correct we can't identify an enemy. You're, you're, you're talking about major failings on just a, a surface level, and this is supposed, supposed to be covert ops um, that can't even be put into place because of political correctness. And then Phil Haney's describing a scrubbing of names that have been developed by agents out in the field for years and years and it just you know why are we not surprised that events like what happened in orlando we don't have more of it now pam you had written a column about how the orlando terrorist friend had contacted the fbi directly about this guy ahead right. of time and, and and they never followed up look this is ongoing uh, there are very bad people out there and uh, we know I, I know from readers that have been contacting the fbi they do not follow up this is not their own initiative this is coming from it on high the idea that the attorney general would say love and compassion will defeat jihad is tantamount to saying we must surrender. And it's not that just these egregious, gruesome, ghastly attacks. The story of that little girl, the five-year-old girl, who, by the way, was special need in Idaho. Idaho should be the clarion call. Idaho should be the clarion call of every suburban mom out there. Idaho should be Donald Trump's clarion call on immigration. Five-year-old special needs girl who was smaller for her. So she was smaller than five, okay, who was stripped naked, who was urinated on and in her mouth and raped. And the media, when I first reported the story, one of, one of two or three um, um, websites that reported it, we came under enormous criticism, uh, you know, visceral attacks by the left that the story didn't happen. And then when, it, of course, it did happen because you heard the eyewitness, um, they said we got the story wrong because we had said, and this I had gotten from someone who was there, uh, Syrian refugees but they were from Iraq and Sudan. That's like saying we got their sock color wrong. It's not an issue of whether they were from Syria or Iraq or Sudan or Afghanistan. They're from jihad nations, and this is exactly the kind of immigration that Donald Trump wants to halt and that we must halt. I mean, our special needs children... Where, where, where did they safe? come from, these people? Iraq and Sudan. Now, you know Sudan.
Sudan, northern Sudan is. Oh, well, wait a, a minute, but John Kerry, I just read you what he had said. I mean, John Kerry said there's no evidence, zero evidence refugees pose greater risk than other groups. Because they're imposing their fantasist narrative on the American people. And they know that the media is going to run it verbatim without questioning. And they do, which is why so many, at least half of the American people, are misinformed. But this story, I think, is a game changer. If our special needs children are not safe, no one is safe. Who we, I mean, are we who going to in the media, Europe? Who in the media is focusing on this five-year-old, this five-year-old girl in a rape case? I'll be honest, I search the news exhaustively every day, and I didn't see it on my own. My producer, Linda, pointed it out to me. I'm like, how did I miss this? Why, why wasn't this posted everywhere? It wasn't. I'll tell you who posted it. Salon posted with this headline, no, Syrian refugees didn't rape a child in Idaho. Right-wing urban blog, blah, blah, blah. Jezebel posted, no, Syrian refugees didn't rape a child in Idaho. The Inquisitor, uh, Syrian refugees didn't gang rape a five-year-old. Raw story, Idaho prosecute, anti-Muslim bigot, made-up shocking gang rape. That's the kind of media that people are getting. And that's why what we do and what you do, Sean, is so crucial, what we do on Facebook. Look, in the wake of the Orlando Jihad, Facebook took down my page and took down Stop Islamization of America. Fifty, I have over 50,000 uh, members, and my own page has 350,000 uh, followers. I mean, there is a there is a concerted effort by the leftist Islamic machine to shut down any discussion in accordance with... Well, the, look at look at what the Attorney General did this week. You know, they, they released the transcript. And I pledge allegiance to omitted. I pledge <laughs> allegiance to omitted. May God, and I guarantee you it wasn't God, that it was Allah, Absolutely. protect him on behalf of omitted. And then she says, our most effective response to terror and hatred is compassion and it's love. Is surrender. Look, the very first words he uttered on his first 911 call was the Bismillah, was uh, Allah, the merciful, the beneficent, the same Bismillah that they made over Daniel Pearl when they beheaded him, when they made over James Foley, when they behead every infidel, every non-Muslim, every heretic, every apostate, every homosexual. All right, let me, let me give Bismillah. the last word uh, to our good friend Rich. Uh, Rich, it's pretty scary. I mean, this is a state of denial. It's sort of like the 9-11 Commission report. They're at war with us. We're not at war with them, and a new report will be written after thousands are killed again. Sean, we've become dislocated from reality. One last anecdote for you. Just in the past couple of weeks, we saw as Twitter moved to shut down the United States intelligence community's access to their account. Uh, there was a program run called Dana Miner. We also look back and we'll see that Prince Walid bin Talal, the Black Prince of Saudi Arabia, probably the most prominent fiscal jihadi in the world, the guy who offered $10 million to Giuliani. He's now a, a, a large, large majority owner inside Twitter Corporation, and we see where these decisions lead. The amount of influence that these guys have inside the United States government, inside the deliberate decision-making process, security apparatus has compromised our national security apparatus. You're basically saying we're screwed. We're in deep trouble, Sean. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. I wish I had better news. I don't. 800-941-SEAN. Thank you both for being with us. When we come back...